This morning we're going to keep you all on your toes as we have a responsive Old Testament reading this morning. So please read the words in bold and italics as we listen for God's holy word. This morning coming from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 23 through 32. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. <coughs> you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord and your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in heaven and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon be blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I always try to be as honest as I can when it comes to speaking with people, and especially with young people. So here it goes. I don't remember much about confirmation class. <laughs> <laughs> this was a time before cell phones and social media, so it's a little harder to get back and find such visual or audio evidence, which for many of us is probably a good thing, right? I don't remember which topics we spoke about. I don't remember if I presented any particular project to anyone. But you know what I do remember? I remember McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right, the Golden Arches. I remember going to McDonald's with my confirmation mentor, who happened to be my friend's mother. Her name is Mrs. Decker. I remember sitting there, a little awkwardly, and talking about my life with my mentor. That's it. Somewhere along the line in 1996, I think that was the date, I'm not even sure if that was the correct year, there were a few pictures taken on Confirmation Sunday. I have two in recorded history in my own records. The first one was a group of us as the Confirmands myself, that the boys in our pleated slacks of the mid-1990s, <laughs> the girls in their floral print dresses that match the curtains. <laughs> and I have yet one other picture of my youth pastor, Nona, my confirmation mentor, Mrs. Decker, and myself. And that's it. So I ask you all this morning, do you remember your confirmation experience? Looking back, I wonder about that day, Confirmation Sunday. I wonder what I was thinking at the time. I, I wonder if I thought I had it all figured out, or maybe if I had no idea what was going on. I wonder about my pastor, Nona, and if she had reservations about that year's Confirmation class. <coughs> Were they really ready to become members of the church? And I wonder about Mrs. Decker. What was she thinking about her role in all of this? Did those visits to McDonald's pay off? 
Did she do a good job as a mentor? Was there anything more that she could have done or said to me, this carefree teenager? Well, with all those anxieties and all those doubts of the uncertain future, friends, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, I was able to keep in touch with Mrs. Decker throughout my teens as I sang with her in the church choir. I walked my dogs past her house that was just down the street where I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, and hung out at her house, actually spending time with my friends who were her daughter and her son. I saw less and less of Mrs. Decker as I left college, and now I see her barely at all, except for the occasional visit to my family over the holidays. But even if we do remember all of those details of what transpired during that confirmation class, I remember her being there for me, ushering me along this journey called our Christian walk. Maybe the story does seem more of a success, quote unquote, now that I'm uh, here as a pastor. But I'll be honest once again, saying that Mrs. Decker is just as important to me as if I were in any other career in life. Somehow, in that simple act of treating me to some McDonald's each week, Mrs. Decker conveyed to me a future and a hope that was perhaps beyond both our wildest dreams. So I would like for us this morning to meditate on our wildest dreams as we celebrate the commissioning of this year's confirmation class and as we imagine the future for these young people, the future for ourselves, and the future of this church. Now for many of us, the prophet Joel may not be the first person that comes to mind when we think and when we go to looking back to reading the Bible and reading these words of hope and future, our minds may quickly go to other prophetic texts of Isaiah or Jeremiah. They may go to the kingdom imagery of Jesus and the Gospels, or perhaps even to the story in the book of Acts leading to Pentecost. Maybe well, we should start there, that, that story of Pentecost, when we, when we think about a future for the church, a vision for the church. So let's read from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. And you know, we pick up with the disciple Peter, who is Jesus' rock, now an apostle. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these people are not drunk, as you suppose. For it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven and above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mists. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wait a minute. The prophet Joel was part of the, one of the very first Christian sermons ever recorded. Well, maybe there is something to this minor prophet after all. In fact, the words of Joel were not only important when they were written around 400 BCE, or when Peter used these words to share the good news of the risen Christ with the world, but they are important to us today, in the year 2016. Joel is writing with what some may call apocalyptic imagery. Often we hear the word apocalypse and think of zombies and destruction and great explosions with the world falling apart. Many of our movies have this imagery. However, there are several writers throughout the scriptures who use such imagery. For, for them, much like Joel, it is a time to understand and imagine God's kingdom when it will be realized here on earth. 
Even Jesus spoke with apocalyptic, apocalyptic imagery as he shared about the coming of God's kingdom. And Joel will use some fascinating imagery to capture this sentiment, perhaps well suited for a Halloween special. He will write of blood, fire, and columns of smoke, the sun turning to darkness, and the moon to blood. The first section of our scripture reading this morning is in response to a horrible drought and plague of locusts that decimated Israel. The second section of this text moves us into a new direction as the prophet shares with us words of God's promise and presence. And in verse 28, we begin to read of Joel's own apocalyptic prophecy. God speaks in verse 28. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit <coughs> on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Here, after a very serious natural disaster that left many within Israel in pain and anguish, the prophet shares words on a future and a hope. The words then afterward introduce us to a time yet to be realized, but will signify the time of completion. And then we read something pretty radical. The Spirit of God will be poured out on all flesh. The recipients of God's Spirit will not just be those with the appropriate training or education, the right age, the right color, the right gender. No, God's Spirit will be received by all. This was also the radical message that Peter shares with those gathered in the book of Acts as he announces that salvation in Christ is for all people, Gentile and Jew, people of all nations and all backgrounds. It's the next part that strikes a particular personal chord as we read this text this morning. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Here Joel provides an image of all people of all ages sharing in God's vision for this world to come. And what a beautiful image it is as we celebrate confirmation as we gather to worship amongst generations together here in this space, and as we continue to imagine a new future here at Alta Vista Presbyterian Church in the days ahead. So what will this future of Alta Vista look like? Perhaps we have left and we have felt like we have gone through our own droughts and locust invasions of sorts leaving us worn out, disheartened, and uncertain of our future. Perhaps we've doubted our own abilities to lead with this church based on our age or our social standing. Perhaps we have lost a vision for a brighter future as we come upon the daily news headlines of this political season and of the great travesties going on around the world. And yet, we are called to continue on. We wake up each day, we put our shoes on, and head out the door of our homes in the hopes of a better day. We may not have any significant plans to change the world this day, but we persevere nonetheless. And this is what I think about when I look back on confirmation experience with Mrs. Decker so many years ago now. Perhaps there were no particular life-changing goals in mind when she accepted the call to take some time out of her busy life to serve as my mentor. And I'm pretty sure as a teenager, I didn't have any particular plans to change the world as a 15-year-old. And maybe the expectations of the confirmation class were modest when being discussed and organized by the pastor, Nona, and the session in the Christian Education Committee. But somehow, those simple acts of faithfulness in the world 
created a space for God to move in the most amazing ways. Yes, over lunch at McDonald's, we talked about normal things like school and church. And we also talked about issues of things that are just part of our normal life. But we also talked about how God was moving in that life. We talked about a future. We talked about our faiths. Yes, we played games and icebreakers in confirmation class. We also practiced Christian community, a theme that is essential for the life of the church. Yes, we worked on our faith statements or our creeds. And we began to put down onto paper the words and language to help describe the very mystery of our Creator. Yes, these were simple acts. But within these simple acts, God moved to shape the very world we live in today and the kingdom we envision to come. And this is the good news for us this morning, whether or not we're going through confirmation or not, God gives us all a vision and a future for this church and beyond. What words may our sons or daughters prophesy today? What dreams might our elders share? What visions shall our young people cast for this congregation, for this community, for this world? When the world is at its darkest, when our frustrations seem bleak, when our vision is lacking, God reminds us that the very spirit that moved upon the waters of creation are here within us today. The very spirit that descended upon Jesus in the waters of baptism is here within us today. The very spirit that blew as a rushing wind and rested as tongues of fire is here within us today. The prophet Joel reminds us that it's very, this very spirit that will continue to remind us of God's presence for us here today. And it is this very spirit that will compel us forward to re realize God's kingdom here on earth as we share in God's vision for the future. We may not be victims of natural disaster like droughts or locusts. We may not be preachers like Peter on Pentecost, but it is the same God who shares with us this gift of vision for the future. It's a future for our people as we are here today in this place imagining what God will continue to do. So sisters and brothers, may we be courageous enough to speak to this people, <coughs> to live out God's plans for our future as a beloved community, and to walk in faith through these modest and spectacular days of our very lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.